Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This story is another in our Bernice series. Bernice asked her father to tell her another story about the gnomes in the forest, and he is ready to do that. Bernice settles into bed and listens as Boo Boo and Bluebell return to the forest to hear a story from Bixie the gnome. Bixie the gnome tells a story. It's that time, Papa, says Bernice. Time for me to go to bed, I think, yawned her Papa. You can't go to bed yet. Why not? This old bear feels super sleepy tonight, Bernice's Papa said with droopy eyelids. I'm sorry you are sleepy, Papa, but do you have enough energy left to do one more thing? asked Bernice. I guess it depends on what it is, little bear. Would it help if I said that I don't think you look too old? said Bernice sincerely. I feel better already, laughed her papa. Great, I thought you might. Do you have enough energy to tell me a story? I always have time and energy to tell you a story, said her papa as he tucked Bernice into bed. Are you comfy and warm? Yes, Papa. How about Twigga, Wolfie, and Madeline? Are they ready for a story, too? Let me check. They say they are. Good. Now close your eyes, little bear, as I do my very best to tell you a story about Boo Boo, Bluebell, and Bixie the Gnome. Bernice cuddled with Twigga, Wolfie, and Madeline and closed her eyes. Love you, Papa, whispered Bernice. Love you too, little bear. Once upon a time, in a world full of magic and fun, there lived a brave little bear named Boo Boo. She lived in a large castle at the edge of a mystical forest. And in this forest, there were unicorns, fairies, gnomes, and all manner of insects, birds, and animals. It was a wonderful place. On this day, Boo Boo and Bluebell, a young unicorn, have gone back deep into the forest near Boo Boo's castle to where they had last met a wise old gnome named Bixie. They followed a flower-lined path that eventually led to a magical clearing in the woods that holds a trunk full of the greatest treasure the world has ever known, books. Bixie had invited them for a visit after meeting them during their previous search for the trunk so that he could share with them a story. Arriving at the clearing, Boo Boo said, somewhat out of breath, Oh, during these long walks, I sometimes wish I had wings like Kai Kai, so I could fly here instead. My legs are too short. Well, maybe next time Kai Kai can come and you can ride on his back, Bluebell said with a smile. That sounds like a good idea. There's the clearing up ahead, and I see that Bixie is waiting for us. Good morning, young travelers. I hope your journey was an enjoyable one, said Bixie, standing in front of the trunk full of books. Well, it was a bit of a journey, but an enjoyable one, answered Boo Boo. It's a wonderful walk, Bixie. And the forest around your house is so beautiful. I think Boo Boo wishes her legs were longer, though, said Bluebell with a laugh. I think we walked a little too fast today. Well, I know there have been times I could have benefited from having the long legs of a unicorn, 
but we do the best we can, said Bixie with a smile. I've prepared some hot honey tea for you both, which should make you feel refreshed and full of energy. Thank you, Bixie, said Boo Boo and Bluebell. I promised you during your next visit that I would tell you a story from the trunk. Why don't you have a seat over there on the branches? And I will tell you a story of some flowers that used to grow here in the forest, said Bixie, sitting down in front of them. So it goes. Long, long ago, it is told that the flowers were all white and that each received its color by some magical power. The little daisy with its yellow eye received its golden center when angry elves threw sunbeams at the little fairies. The daisy grew to be very proud of her yellow eye and thought it showed off to perfection her pure white rim. One day she was looking about the field where she grew and saw the little white cups growing about her in abundance. There is too much white in this field, she told the other daisies. Our beautiful white borders would be shown off much better if the white cups were golden. But perhaps the white cups do not wish to become golden, said her sisters. Oh, but we do, dear daisies, said the white cups all in chorus. We have always wanted to be a beautiful yellow like your eyes, but we thought you would not like us to have that color as we have to live in the same field. Oh, yes, we would, said the daisy. And I am sure the fields will look much more beautiful if you were a golden color rather than white. Besides that, we shall be seen to better advantage so both of us will gain by the change. But who will help us to change our color? asked the white cups. The daisy thought for a long time, and at length she said, You might get the goblins to color you, but the thing is to get them to do it. They are very fussy fellows, and if they thought they were bothering the fairies, they would do it quick enough. But if we ask them to make you yellow so that we all may look more beautiful, they would laugh and run off. Why can't we make them think they would make the fairies angry if they made us golden? asked the white cups. I am sure we can find a way. That would be one sure way, said the daisy. But what do you propose to do? We will ask the fairies when they come into the fields tonight for their fun, said the white cups. That night when the fairies came flying over the field, the white cups called to them and told them what they wanted. Oh, that will be beautiful, said the fairy queen, and we can trick the goblins easy enough, as you shall see. The fairy queen called her fairies around her and whispered so low that the field flowers could not hear what she said. But they heard the fairies laugh as they flew away, and each landed on a little white cup and began to sing. We love you, little white cup, our lady of the field. We will watch over you and keep you from all danger. You are prettier than the daisy with her yellow eye so bright. You are like a waxen blossom in the pale moonlight. Over and over they sang the verse as they leaned over and kissed the little cups. And soon from out of the woods came the goblins, hopping and jumping like leaves blowing in the wind. Here they are, they said when they saw the fairies, listen and hear what they are singing. When they heard the fairies' pretty love song to the little white cups, the goblins kicked up their heels and laughed. 
each laying a tiny finger beside his nose as he winked at his brother. Off they scampered to the woods again, and the fairies kept on singing their song, while the daisy watched with its yellow eye, wondering how her cousin, the white cup, would be made the color for which she had wished. Soon the goblins came back, but this time they carried bags over their shoulders, and they crept carefully through the grass. The fairies saw them all the time, but of course they pretended not to. And when the goblins were quite near, the queen said, Come, my children, leave your best loved flower for tonight. Tomorrow you shall come again. As they were flying away, they glanced back, and in the moonlight, they saw the goblins hard at work over each little white cup. When the morning sun awoke, he opened wide his eyes. For all over the field, among the daisies, he saw the little golden cups nodding happily at their cousins with the golden eyes. The next night, when the fairies came flying through the fields, they saw the yellow cups. You are more beautiful than ever, they said to the golden cups and we will call you our golden cups. But you must be known as the buttercups, or the goblins will discover our trick and make you white again. The buttercups thanked the fairies and told them that they would be glad to be their cups whenever they gave a banquet and that they would never let the goblins know the fairies had fooled them. So they bloom among the daisies in the fields and are called buttercups. But they are known to the fairies as the little golden cups. And the goblins wonder why the fairies always seem so happy when they fly near the buttercup and find it changed. The fairies are too wise to let the goblins know how they tricked them and gained for the buttercups the very color that they wanted. But it is rather hard sometimes not to tell them when the little goblins scamper about and try to upset their plans. The fairy queen has taught them silence is golden and they know their queen is right. And that is the story, my young travelers. Is it true? asked Boo Boo. Do all plants have similar stories? asked Bluebell. Well, some might say it's true, and certainly there is a great deal of magic in this kingdom. But this story takes place so long ago, I can't say for sure. Sometimes silence can be a great way to communicate and be more effective than speaking. I remember when I would get an angry look from my mother and father. That was more than enough to tell me they were upset at me. Yes, my father sometimes does the same thing when I forget to take home my homework from school, said Boo Boo. Also, it's sometimes best when we are upset to wait just a little while to express ourselves so that we can do so in a calmer manner. Bixie continued. Now, how about more honey tea and some cookies? Yes, please, replied Boo Boo and Bluebell. And with that, Papa Bear gave Bernice a kiss on the forehead, adjusted her blanket, making sure that her friends were comfy too, turned off her lamp, and quietly whispered good night. And that is the end of our story. Good night, sleep tight. <laughs>